What's up? How are you, Amy? Oh, I'm fine. Jack has COVID again. Yeah, your boy Rob has COVID right now, too, just so you know. I can hear it. Everyone knows. Yeah, that's uh, that's why I'm not at Kasim's house because it's a whole thing. Kasim had to go to San Diego also to do, uh, I think, Comic Con. Yeah. But, uh, so what's what's going on with Jack? Um, he was sick over last weekend, and like had a temperature that he couldn't kick for like two or three days. And he always has a runny nose, so I didn't think anything of that. And I just. I tested him and it came up positive. But remember when we all had it, he was so sick, but didn't test positive. So I don't know. This is all just so weird. So he's been home all week, which just is like, and we were giving Bo a week off of camp this week so he could just chill at home. So it's been, you know, mayhem. But it's, uh, but like, you don't have to keep Bo away from him, obviously, because. No, because Bo just had it. Right. And we all just had it. So none of us are like literally three and a half weeks ago. So we're not being crazy cautious. He's just letting it ride out. I mean, you also can't like quarantine from your four year old. Right. I just like, I don't even know what, well, I didn't know if it's like because he goes to camp, what you have to do. Like, I don't know. It's like a whole thing. Well, but, like, I know who gave it to him. Uh, a family had it. Their little one wasn't testing positive. So they sent him to camp. Mm. And I, he probably spread it. Yeah. I, you know, usually when I get sick, the first thing I do is like track down where I got sick. Well, and this one, it's such a stumper for me. I'm like, I have no idea. Well, because the person I'm dating was here. So we were like doing a lot of stuff, going right. out to dinners, traveling. So I'm like, I don't know. I, I can't figure it out. But also like I was barely sick. Like I, I had like a mild cold, but now I'm just like, I don't know what you're supposed to do. It was like, five, six days ago already that I found that I was sick. I don't know what you're supposed to do. I'm reading things that are like health professionals say, like, don't let this round of COVID like slow lives down. But then also people who are like, no, don't do it. I'm just like, I don't fucking know what to do. So I'm going to stay away from people for a week test. Hope I show up negative in it. But it's just like, but like, I've, this is my third time having COVID. The other two times I would have felt bad if somebody like, got what I had or what the, where this it's like, yo, th- this is, and again, I understand people get it so bad. And it's, yeah. it's a horrible thing. I, I'm not trying to say it's not, I'm just trying to say what my experience was, was like, uh, if, if, it, if you just told me I had a cold, I'd be like, yeah, it wasn't bad. Like it wasn't like, like, right. It was a mild cold. Well, I mean, Cutter and I were talking about it because I mean, we all got sick at the same time and all had a very different illness. You know what I mean? Like he had a sore throat, a cold, a cough. I had none of that. I just had a temperature and body aches. Bo had nothing. Jack had a high temperature and was vomiting. So like we all were dealing with different things. But Cutter and I were saying like, I feel like we just need to start treating this like any illness where if you're sick, don't be around people. And then when you feel better, you're better. Yeah, like if this wasn't COVID, I'd be in the gym today. But I'm like, oh, right. I don't want to go to the gym because I don't want to be that guy. Like, I don't know. I they, know. They, need, they need to start making places just for people with COVID. You're absolutely right. Like, if you have COVID, come shop here. Yeah, like if there was a gym right now that was like, oh, COVID. You might be onto something. Yeah, the COVID gym. I'd be up in there right now. Just <laughs> fucking wheezing on the treadmill, you know? The, uh, oh, man. So I, I had something that I was like, I can't wait to tell Jamie about this. So obviously, like you had your story with Jack, how like potty training him was like the worst thing of all time. Yes. Remember? Obviously, we're remember. still repairing from it. Yeah, it was like the way and I was around for it. And I was like, I've never seen anything like this. Like he was refusing to go to the bathroom for a long time. Then he was like crying. It was like the worst, just oh, horrible yeah. thing. So the person I'm dating she makes a joke about like her nephew and is like, oh yeah, well we can watch him. Like, you know, how people you know, make jokes and, and I always say the same thing. I'm like, listen, if a kid is potty trained, like I don't care, I'll watch a kid for as long. Like I, you know, I'm good with kids, whatever. Yeah. And uh, good enough. And she goes, oh, he's one and a half. And she goes, yeah, he's potty trained. She goes, you know how he, he potty trained himself. I go, what? She goes, he potty trained himself. She goes, he had a book about a little kid who was going to going on the potty and like he got to the third page and it was like the little boy sat on the toilet and went to the potty and he said to his mom he goes can I 
do this? And she said, yeah. And that was it. Fuck them. I, Jamie, I was Fuck like, I was like, them. I was like, Jamie would hate you so much I right now for this so story. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, girl. I, and your perfect nephew. Could you imagine? I read him all those goddamn books, everything. Fuck that. Not fair. That's Whatever. that's wild. Like it, it, like it's it's just it's the same thing we were just talking about with COVID, right? It's so crazy how like something can be one yeah. second of your life and never thought about it again, and then something else could like bring hell upon you and your entire family and take over. Like, yeah, oh yeah. But do you remember like the worst part of that whole like the worst day or experience where you were like, this is just never. Oh ending. yeah, I took his pacifier out of his mouth and threw it on the floor because I was so mad. <laughs> Cause well, he did hit me right before, but like, I was like, come on, you're not a baby. Like, uh, well, that was also at the point when he was pottying for anybody else, but me like at school that he would do it for his teacher. My friend took him out for lunch with her daughter and he went no problem. It's, it was just me at that point. And that's when I, that's when I really, you know, got angry. He was angry up until then. And then I, I had my turn. Parenting is such a trip. Cutter and I actually just started couples therapy for the very first time. First time. Yep. We've never been to therapy together. He's actually wow. never been to therapy in general. Yeah. Wow. We had our first session last night. And it's interesting because we really were intending to talk a lot about like parenting and like helping us kind of through that. But we didn't even get to talk about our kids. <laughs> it was so the therapist that we're going to see is somebody that I used to see on the regular. Um, and then when I moved, didn't see anymore, but because we're moving out of state, he can't be a therapist in the sense of like diagnose anybody or prescribe anything, but he can be like a coach. So he's our coach. And we did some like interesting exercises. Um, and it was really good for us. I felt like we went out to dinner after we made like a whole night of it. And we had like, conversate like a really long conversation over dinner it wasn't like him on his phone and work and back and forth and this and that like it was I'm interested to see what this journey does for us because like I said we're, our intentions were really to be about our kids but I didn't realize like how much him and I were our needs were not being met in our relationship wow well both, maybe both. I did know that but I guess I love therapy because I love being called out and I I wasn't necessarily interested in him being called out because I could do that all day. I can call him out on his shit all the time. But what was interesting was I could really see why he does certain things are from like his own wounds that he was able to, he, like when he said, he's like, when Cutter just said that, he needed you to look at him and like acknowledge that. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So it's been... Just the vibe has been different between us for the past 24 hours. And I don't know, like I said, I'm really, I'm really into it. I'm really, I'm sad it's taken us this long, but I'm really proud of us that we're doing it. And um, I think it's going to be really good for Cutter, for somebody that's never talked about himself, has a really hard time. Like he, in the first, I would say like 30, 40 minutes, like he couldn't even pinpoint an emotion he was feeling. Like the guy was like, when she says that, when she does that, how does that make you feel? And he like couldn't even oh, think that's, of that's, anything. I think I feel like that's a guy thing. I, I struggle yes, with that shit for sure. <laughs> yeah. He did say he's like, look, women are way better at this than men. It just comes naturally to them. But, um, but by the end, I feel like it. I think more than anything, our lives are just so chaotic between like, we're doing a renovation. We're starting the second phase of the renovation. So we're, we're already moving shit around all this. I'm in and out of Albuquerque. The kids are has COVID in and out of camps. They fight nonstop managing, making sure our nanny, how many hours, like payment, all, like our bills are so high right now. Like all of this, there's so much shit going on and cutter like shoulders, a lot of that, which I'm grateful for, you know, and I do like my share, but we, I realized like he slowed down so much and was so present. And that's really hard for him because he's just always like to do, to do, to do, to do whatever. And so I think if anything, like, I think this is going to be really good for him to know that you can be another way. 
You know what I mean? Like you can take an hour out of your day to be so present and not look at your phone and not feel like you need to be doing anything else. And the benefits that you get from that, you know, I don't think he's ever allowed himself to do that except when he played baseball. Yeah. And I imagine like, I, I'm just, this is just how I would imagine because I don't have kids. I'm not in a relationship like, or whatever. I've never yeah. been married, but it's like, I imagine before kids, like you feel yourself going through these phases or you're changing or you're improving, or you see, you notice these little things about each other. And then, and then once you have kids, it's like, like, I, I just can't even, I, I don't even know. Not how, for like, everybody. Especially with two kids, like being like, Oh yeah. Well, like, like noticing the difference between like, yeah, la- like for me, when I wake up in the morning, I could tell you if yesterday I felt a little different than like the day <laughs> where like, I feel like in a relationship, you could be like, Oh, something's a little off this Where If you have two kids running around this, your job, blah, blah, blah. Like you can't, you don't even know like, Oh wait, something might be a little like obviously big things yeah. register, but when there's just something that's like, a little off or like maybe, and then even if you do realize, maybe you're like, I don't have the fucking time for this shit. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And so I think it's going to just be really good for us to be able to connect without all of the distractions that we normally have. So to be continued. Can you, can you share like one of the exercises that you did? Like, what are those like? Yeah. So we did one exercise where he made us face each other and hold hands, which is awkward and we were laughing at first, but you realize like when you start getting heated, you want to take your hands away. And so he doesn't want us to ever get to that point. Like it's like a six. So he's like, if you feel like you need to take your hands off, you need to take a deep breath and like get deeper into the feeling. And, you know, so in that exercise, I went first and I basically express some feelings and and you can't accuse the person of anything or say you did something wrong of just more like, listen, when this happened, I felt this because of this. And you only say like one sentence. And then he repeats back to me. Only thing he says is what I heard you say was when this happened, you felt this and that's it. He just literally repeats verbatim what I said. And a couple of times when he was repeating it, he said like the wrong words or something where he was like, when you said this, you felt suffocated, whatever. And the therapist was like, nope, hold on. She didn't say suffocated. That's your brain getting in there and creating your story. Take that word out, say what she said. And then he said what I said. And he goes, do you have a different feeling now when you said what she actually said? And he goes, yeah, I get it. So it's basically helping us get our own brains out of the way to like really hear what the other person says. So he repeats back to me all the sentences. And it's interesting because by the time like I got to like what I felt was my last sentence I wanted to say, it was like, like you can, he's like, you're so in your truth. Like you just get there. Like you start breathing deeper, you start speaking slower, you use fewer words and it's, you get there. And then after that, I say, And no, and then he has to say like what he can do to help that, like repair. And then we didn't get to the last part because we ran out of time, but it was so, and then we're going to do him starting beginning next week. But he he also kind of like pushed us off the pier a little bit. And he said he did because he knows me and he, you know, he worked with me for a year and a half. So he knows me pretty well, but it's really, it's really interesting to know how little we actually listen to each other. I just found something that I love and I think you will too. It's called ZocDoc. And ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed that will take your insurance and are available when you need them. So basically ZocDoc, you can find every type of specialist under the sun, whether you're trying to straighten those teeth or fix an achy back, get that mold checked out, anything else, ZocDoc has you covered. I use them to find a chiropractor in my area and it was awesome, took my insurance, like I said, everything. They have a mobile app, it's easy. It's like ordering a ride to a restaurant or getting a delivery to your house. You search, find, book the doctors in a few taps, 
and you are done. You could also go to ZocDoc.com to find the doctor that's right for you. You book the appointment. Like I said, you can do it in person or remotely, whatever works for your schedule. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc and I am one of them. It is my go-to whenever I need to find and book a quality doctor. Go to ZocDoc.com slash pajama and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash pajama. Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash pajama. Yeah. I didn't realize that as I get older, I really appreciate like my accessories and my main one being my sunglasses. And obviously sunglass season is here and we all want to look great and have our options. But do you guys know about Shady Rays? Okay. It is an independent sunglass company that offers a world class product that is just as good as any of your expensive pairs that you've worn. They have durable frames. They're extremely clear. They have polarized lenses for outdoor living and beyond, but that's not all. They offer also insane protection in all their eyewear. Every eye pair is backed by lost and broken replacements. So if you lose a break a pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new one, no questions asked. And you guys, listen, they're so much less expensive. And you know what else they do? They provide 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order and have donated over 20 million meals to date. So look good in your shades and feel good by making an impact. Wow. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com mm-hmm. and use code PAJAMA for 50% off when you get two pairs of polarized sunglasses, two or more. That's S-H-A-D-Y-R-A-Y-S.com. Have and you I- seen the show uh, Couples Therapy on Showtime? Mm-mm. Jamie, is so good. Really? It, it's like this amazing doctor- And she has like five different couples and they show their whole journey from like the beginning to how they get to where they are and this. And it's like, and then season two, they come back and some couples, I forget if some couples come back or whatever, but like you watch some of these couples and you're like, oh my God, it's, it's one of the best shows. Really, Yeah. You should check it out. What were you going to say? Sorry. I would say, I just watched, um, I just binged this show called the bear on Hulu. Rob, I think you'd like it. And it's about this guy who is like on the trajectory to be like a top chef in the world. And his brother dies and he comes, has to, and he left in his will, the, his, their like meat sandwich shop to him. So he moves back to Chicago to try and save it, run it, fix it, everything. And all these like rich characters of the people that work in the shop and frequent the shop and this and that, like all together and it's fast paced and it's real and it's gritty. And Jeremy Allen White is such a fucking good actor. And all I could feel when I watched it was similar to like what I feel like from Sopranos is like, I want to fuck, that's what I want to do. Like I love doing Big Sky and I love my role so much, but when that time is up, like I'm going to put out in the world, like that's the type of shit I want to do. It's so good. You'll love it. That's it's like 25 minutes and there's eight episodes. You'll blow through it in an afternoon. That's what I did when I was at work. That's yeah. I, I want to check it out. Also, you know, I saw like, sometimes I see the ads for that. And out of the corner of my eye, I think it's castle. <laughs> Cause of the and hair. I and I don't even think it looks like castle when I really look it at doesn't. the guy, but because just his, his like, I, yeah, just, I don't know, like the shape of his face, the hair, yeah, maybe, maybe like the whole thing. Like if you just look at the corner, like I, I forget if I saw it on a bus or something and I really like, for a second, I was like, is that Cass? Like, That's I thought it was funny. like a G4 ad. or So, yeah, I think our boy is at uh, Comic-Con. That's like a big G4 thing. I feel like that's like his Oscars. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, this is. Maybe somebody will smack him in the mouth. Oh, God. Wouldn't that be great? The, uh, I so want here's Cass a- him to go viral for getting the shit beaten out of him. Then yeah. he'll finally write his show. The the thing that I wanted to do is like, so I was going to ask this question when we were all together, but then I was like, oh, it might be better to ask you, you and we'll talk about it. What do you think Kasim's answers would be? So okay. I'm watching, um, is it, no, Married, yeah, Married at First Sight. Okay. I haven't watched it in, in a while, but I was watching it and they said um, like weeks, not like in a while. I just, I, I got to catch up. 
So they, they made a list of five words and it was about their partner putting those words in order for the things that matter most to them Okay. when looking for a relationship. So it's like money, looks, sex, jobs, uh, job, which I don't know, money and job to me are similar, but I guess they're not actually. Money, sex, job, looks. Looks. And kids. Ki- and kids, which kids is... I guess it's, do they have kids, like, but also do like, want do they kids want, or not? okay. Yeah. Do kids? they want kids? What's kids? Do you think kids with Kasim is most important? Oh, oh, this is Kasim's answers. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. No, we could do our answers too. But then what I want to figure out is uh, for our boy Cass, like since he's not okay. here. Yeah. Kasim's are kids. So I'll say them again, just so we have them all money, sex, jobs, looks, and kids. Kasim's is kids. Looks, sex, money, job. Yeah, I think, I don't know, job might be higher. So let me see. I think, yeah, kids is, I mean, I guess kids. Oh, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, she he would want her to have a job, but it didn't matter if she made a lot of money or not. Right. I think more so like he would need her to be passionate about something. I, I'm yes, sure he would right. rather you're somebody right. who has more money than whatever. But like, so let's just because uh, it, it's hard to like remember these. We should just rank them how important we think they are. So money. Do we think it's mo- important to cast if if how much money the girl has? No. Yeah, I, I don't think it is. Uh, but also like it's it's hard. Some I, I like so when I, the last relationship I was in, when we would take these like tests where you talk about stuff and this, like, she was like, you can't just answer a question. <laughs> you know, She's like, any question that gets asked, you're like, well, it could be that because like, when I think like, how important is money? And I'm like, well, it's not that important. But then if you go like, what if somebody has like, no money, and also to the point of like, they want to be frugal, even when you want to do stuff like, you know what I mean? Like, even if you're like, no, it's okay. Like I'll pay for it. So we'll go do this thing. And they're like, no, I don't feel comfortable doing that thing, whether it's like a nice dinner yeah. or uh, whatever. And the same thing with sex. Like I see like sex maybe isn't that important to somebody, but then once it's like, oh no, once it's like no sex or horrible, that's a whole different thing. Well, I, I stand firmly behind my answer for Cassim. Kids is number one that I, Kids I get look, on board with. Sex, job money. Mine would be kids, job, looks, sex, money. Should sex come before looks? Because I I think, I feel like if I'm in a relationship, it's more important for me to have great sex with somebody who might not be as hot than have like, okay, sex with somebody who's hotter. I don't, I don't want, I don't want that. Yeah. So like, I guess sex is more important than looks to me, but looks is important. See, to me, looks like I looks doesn't have to be by anyone's standard. To me, it's like what you're attracted to. So I For think sure. you you need to be very attracted to the person that you're with. A hundred percent. But then I think like with the looks thing, it's not so we're like, I feel like attraction, especially like I know people are like, oh, we're men and women don't separate. But I feel like for women attraction can grow. I don't know if it's more or if it's just easier to somebody that maybe like they're not at first, like, cause they see him doing certain things, mm-hmm. like in certain ways that he acts, or maybe like, you know, like I've known girls before who were like, no, I'm not into this guy. I'm not into this guy. And then she saw the guy with a kid or saw the guy with his sure. mother or so the guy, with the, and all of a sudden it was like right away, like totally oh. changed. I'm so into him this and I know a lot of guys and I just don't know dudes who are like, yeah, you know, I wasn't feeling her. And then I saw her pick up this kid and now I'm like in love. (laughs) Very different. It just doesn't hit the same. Yeah. Yeah. So I I don't like, yeah, money to money to me is not important, but then I've also like, you know, I've heard of people who have relationships where it's like, well, this person like doesn't like them not having like any money can get in the way. Well, money also means to me like, are you responsible with money? Are you bad with money? Like to me, that's why I ranked money where I did. It's not about the amount of money you have. It's like, are, are, can I trust you with money? More? That's a great point. Yeah. That, I never thought about it that way. I thought just how much they have. That's yeah. That's such a great point. I just, I love that. Like I had this question for weeks and then like, as soon as I talked to you, I'm like, oh yeah, that's not what money means. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it's so, 
it's so important, right? If you're just with somebody who like, well, I mean, it's just, you could have so much money and be a fucking moron with it. Or, you know, there's people that are too frugal or there's people that like, aren't responsible or like, don't care. And like, I don't know. I just, I find is like the older I get to like, you know, one of Cutter and I's like biggest issues. And I think we've talked about this is like, it's kind of like a joke how like doomsday he is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it it wears on me after a while. Like, and I tell him, I'm like, I know it's like a joke and like everybody, like people will screenshot and send me photos all the time of Cutter just like this in like the background of photos. Like, or just like- <laughs> Tell people what you're doing. I'm listening. like basically holding my eyes as if I had the worst <laughs> migraine of my life. And like, that's just who he is. But like, it's it's, I can't be around that all the time. You know what I mean? And- he and I had like a big come to Jesus like two, three weeks ago about this. And he's been so good since like he really, I, one thing I will say about Cutter is if I ever really make him be like, yo, this is fucking important. And I, and it, cause I, I don't say it. I'm not angry when I'm saying it. I'm always super calm. And that's what scares him the most when I'm just like, I'm having a really hard time being around this. And it's the truth because I feel like everybody has their circumstances that they push through. But for me personally, I only have my own perspective and I feel like I choose to rise above a lot of things every day to live a full life, to be as positive as I can. So when I'm next to somebody that's complaining or pointing out everything that's wrong after a while, like I can't. I can't be around that anymore. Like it's really, really hard for me. And he has made like a real significant change. It's, it's That's so, amazing. it's so, I appreciate him so much for his effort because I know initially he's doing it for me, but I'm most happy about it because I want him to see there's like another way to live his life. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's what I'm trying to, work with him through therapy too. Now that I realized after this first session was like, I want you to just like, he immediately takes anything I say as criticism as opposed to like an observation and somebody that has an outside view of like, this could be better if you know what I mean. And I think that's where a lot of couples, I guess, run into a lot of problems because anytime people communicate, they just assume that some, his brain hears that I'm telling him he's wrong. And that's not what I'm thinking at all. Yeah. Except he's, when he's complaining. Right. He's, he's such a good dude, but it's crazy. Like how much of a bro cutter is and how yeah. bro he is, but also like how sensitive he is. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah, we got to get him on here. We got to um, get him on here whenever we should do next week. Yeah. We okay. should, or whatever, well, whatever I'm, means I'm going to be in Albuquerque next week, but yes. Yes, we yeah, gotta maybe get it's him better on. the two of you aren't in the same room. <laughs> oh <laughs> we yeah, should... we should have him call. We should <laughs> yeah. have him call Zoom in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay. Yeah, he's uh, he's the best. But yeah, you know what I was, what this reminded me of is like, so the person I'm dating does these like certain little things, like these like cute things, and I want like I have in the past pointed them out of like, oh, you do this, you do this, and she's like, oh, sorry, or like. Oh, I, should, I like, she thinks that she should change those things. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm just pointing out these things that you do that don't bother me. And like, I prove it to her. I'm like, you know, there were like this one thing she did where like, she didn't put the caps back on bottles. She would just like place it there. So if I went to go grab a water, like spill. when I went to go grab the detergent, yeah, it would spill. And I'm like, listen, I'm not doing it. Like, that's not cute. Yeah, I'm like, you're causing chaos in my life. <laughs> like, you know, there's a difference between like, hey, you do this thing and it annoys me to, to me being like, hey, I'm running around cleaning up messes. Yeah. And yeah. then we were sitting on the couch and she spilled the bottle of water oil. And she's like, oh, I thought the cap was on. And I was like, babe, the cap is in the kitchen. Like, <laughs> you don't even have the cap in the room. Like, you're just so crazy with like not putting it. But like, I also uh, don't want someone to live with like, oh, I have to put the cap on course. stuff and this, but- like I told her, I'm like, listen, when you're you helping things, her though, that's a life skill you're going to give her. That's really going to help her in life. Yeah. And it's funny too, because she's like, well, you know what our, our problem is? I grab things by the bottle and by the handle. You grab them by the cap. 
I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll stop. I'll stop doing that. But the, <laughs> but the uh, now when I point other stuff out to her, like she's like, oh, sorry, does that bother you? Or like, that? and I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, I'll. I have no problem telling you if something bothers me. Like I will. Yeah. This other stuff I'm pointing about out about you because I think it's funny or I think it's cute. And then like she, like she's like, no, 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 it bothers you. It's this, you know, like kind of playful, kind of not. And then the other day, like she pointed out like, oh my God, you drink water like this. Like, you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, sorry. You want me to stop? Like, you know, because how do you drink water? What did she say? She just says that I'm like, so like, like, like you open your throat, like you're funneling beer. But also it's like, I'm like, you know, you know how, uh, like the lion King, like how he like holds the baby out. Like I'm almost like like, a a holy thing. You do. You do. You put the bottle straight up. <laughs> right. Yes. And it's like such a, a moment. Like, do I'm you not open like, your throat? Uh, no. Hold on. Mm. I think I do like a little bit, but she's like, even what your other hand does is funny. She's like, you just have a weird like thing or whatever. And like, we were laughing about it. And then 10 minutes later, I'm like, oh, see, like, you know, do I need to stop that now? And she's like, no, no, no. Like it's cute. And it's, and of course, like we're new in a relationship. So it's like these things we find cute to each other. It's been a minute though. It's yeah, been it's a been a, It's been a couple months. Is this the longest one you've had? Uh, I don't know. Certainly. She just came here for a month, Jamie. She was here for a month straight and she just left yesterday. So was she working like from your apartment from my apartment, from like coffee shops, from like wherever, like we, and then we went so away. So in this month, did you guys take time like away from each other during the day or were you together 24 seven? Yeah, she would wake up like two hours before me every day and like mostly for work or whatever. And then like, you know, there were times like, here's my favorite thing about her probably is like, if I wake up and she's like, Hey, I went to the gym. I'm like, awesome. Like, great. I'm going to like, I'm going to do my thing. Like I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to this. I'm like, she's August will be like, oh, like one of my friends is here. I'm going to do this. We're like, I've just been in other relationships before where it's like you, yeah. when you wake up, you wake up and come outside and you feel like that person was just like waiting for you to wake up. And it's like, uh, yeah. like, no, like I need somebody. I love someone who's like independent, does their own thing. And, and like, she'll say to me, like, is it okay with you if I do this? Anymore? I'm like, please, like, go do your thing. I love, I live for that shit. You know, and she's like, I I love the fact that like, I can go do this thing, like come back here and like you're, and we have these like moments together. I'm like, yes, that's when I like more than ever, would it be now that like, she's in my space. So you would think if if there was ever going to be a time where it's like, oh, she's just like waiting for like, what am I going to do this? But she's not at all. Like, she's just, she's very independent. And I'm like, God, I like, it's just, it's so relieving compared to other relationships where it's like, you know, if she's like, I'm going to go have coffee with my friend. Do you want to come? And I'm like, no, she's like, okay, bye. Instead of being like, well, like, like putting some kind of see that should be on that list, like compatibility or like, what, what would the word be? Like, don't bust, don't bust my balls. See, like looks is important and sex is important, but to make it last, you need that. Right, a hundred percent. Somebody that you can live with, that you can coexist with, that like doesn't get in the way of the things that you want to do for yourself. That adds to your life, doesn't take away. But then also, like, I'm not saying other people I've dated who like I've dated people who like would want to go to the gym with me, so they would wait to go with me, and because they're like, oh, I like doing this stuff together. I'm not saying that's wrong. Right. That's just not who I am, and right. that's not. Who I like, I don't want to open my eyes and go like, oh, do I need to rush out of bed? Because maybe this person is waiting for me to start their lives. Like, it's just, it's crazy to me, but people who want to live like Jamie, I was telling her, cause I was telling her, like, we're talking about like, oh, what are we going to miss about each other? And I was telling her like how this is just such a relief. And I know somebody who, uh, when they go play poker, they have their like, I don't know them, know them, but like, you, you know, then like I see them in the casino, they have their girlfriend sit behind them and like, they'll go and play poker for six hours, oh, seven hours, eight hours. It's just, they can't be so like, Jamie, if, if, if I have, like, I can't imagine something crazier than like telling a girl like, all right, I'm going to play poker now. Let's go and have her sit in a chair behind me for eight hours. That to me, that's. That's crazy. What was she doing? Just like sitting on her phone, sitting on her phone the whole time. Like, like just Jamie, I swear to you, that's crazier to me than somebody being like, 
I murdered someone. Because if somebody says I murdered someone, I could be like, I, I can know how you got there. I've been so angry. How at old times. are these people? Jamie, I, I've, I, the person I'm talking about is about 45. Okay. But I know people who are every, every age. Like, I guess it's only okay. At if like- I was like in my, back in like my twenties when I was an idiot and I was like madly in love with someone, if a guy was like, come sit behind me while I play poker for eight hours, I'd be like, okay. Right. But it's also, listen, if you go do that once with somebody, it's one thing I'm talking about every time he goes, No, it's like, yeah, yeah. you sit behind me and go. And then, the, but, the, and, and also I think it's okay if you're like 90 years old, because you never know, you know, it might be your, it might be your last, like how many, every eight minute hours counts. Do you have? every <laughs> yeah. minute counts. You gotta be together guys. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, to me, like, it's that shit of like that can't go anywhere without, or this. And like, you know, I've, I've heard stories of guys where like, you know, it's like, before she goes to the gym, she she like asks, like, is it okay if I go to the gym now? And I'm like, what plan? And like, and not at a courtesy, like, because you might say no. Like, right. It's just this lunatic thing where like I'm, and obviously I'm sure it'll be different if I want to have kids one day or this, but like I really want someone who it's like, yeah, you you you're very independent and like you do yes. your thing and this. And it's she's been so single important. for a while through COVID. So like she, and she's older. So it's like, God, it's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is good. We can, I can't, I can't take the pressure of someone like waiting around for me to like no. eat and to this, like when, when I wake up and she's like, oh, so I had lunch already. I'm like, great. No, now I can, I can have what lunch I want. And we still like, I don't, I don't know what that is of like, do you guys ever eat at the same time? <laughs> Oh, of course. Yeah. Many, many times. I actually took her to the place that we went to for your birthday in Texas, but here at the LA version. Oh, cool. Yeah. The sushi place that you love. Was it good? Uh, Yeah, it was good. You know, like in Austin, I feel like they were a little more like they put three drops of sauce on this piece where like here, like if they had a piece they were putting sauce on, they just like drenched it with sauce. Uh, and I was a little more like, okay, it's very, it was very like saucy and like whatever, mm-hmm. which was like, it was still good, but the, the right. Austin one was just better. And we were just, we just had a better time probably, <laughs> you know, we were just, cause when you're with, here's the thing, it's one of these places where there's only 10 people eating. And when you're two people, you kind of like, you're in the mix with the other. Yeah. Cutter and I were like the last time we went and we were two people, we were in the middle of the table of everybody and like no one talked to us. So we were, we just like kept talking to the chef or just each other. And it was, it was still a phenomenal dinner, but like awkward. Like it just felt like this wasn't like, it was more fun when we had like our own little group at the end of the table. We had a corner, we were chilling. Mm-hmm. So, so much fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I wanted to ask you something me and Kasim talked about when you weren't here that I wanted to ask you about was like, okay. so I, I had a cleaning lady come to my place for the first time ever before the person I'm seeing came over. Cause I was like, oh, like there's things I don't want to do. I don't want to clean the shower. Okay. I don't want to do it. Like my, like, like I even told Kasim when they came here, they were like, you don't even need a cleaning lady. And like Kasim has been to my place and he's like, you could do surgery in here, you know, like, right. it's like, cause there's just nothing like around. It. It's very clean. Like, but there's some stuff that I was like, no, like the inside of my fridge from like defrosting chicken and this and that, that I don't, I don't want to clean it. Like, I, I don't want to do it. So I wanted to ask you, like, is there, are there things that you are like, I'm leaving this for the housekeeper. Like, mm. I don't want to, I don't want to clean it or I'm not doing it or this mm-hmm. like, or cause I know you like love to clean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shower. Same. Just cause it's li- like laborsome. Was that a word? Laborous, laborsome, a lot of labor. Yeah. Just but like I don't uh, labor intensive. And, yes. Labor intensive. Like the shower is right. Um, I don't really clean the toilets. I mean, yeah. I will if there's like skid marks, whatever. I'm not going to like sit and look at that for a week if like, you know, my kids have left it in their bathroom, whatever. Right. It could never be Queen Jamie. Jamie doesn't I don't. Skid marks. I'm not. I don't. No, I actually not. don't because I'm, oh. I'm, a, I'm a bad for the environment, but I like flush multiple times. Yeah. I've never, when I go into Jamie, I, I'm going to start a thing where I should start taking pictures of what's going on inside of men's bathrooms. It's some of the craziest shit you've ever, sometimes it looks like somebody like walked in, opened the door, took shit from their hand, threw it at the toilet and walked out. That's so bad. That's you're like, I don't, I, if you told me 
to do what these people do to oh the toilet my God, like, that's by so going bad. in. Men I, I so wouldn't gross. even I wouldn't even know where to start. Like I'd be like, where I can't do this with my shit unless I'm using my hands. Like it's just every it looks like a painting. Like you're like, what the fuck? Uh yeah. So but but yeah, I luckily like don't I like I'll poof, leave it goes away. I'll leave the inside of the oven. That's that's a great one. I can't do that shit. Like there's something yeah, about that like where it's taking, like taking yeah, taking them out and spraying because look, I also think like I'm so clean for our when our cleaning ladies come that when they come, I'm just paying them to do the extra shit. Like they don't have to put anything away, they don't have to make a bed, they don't have to do any laundry. Like my house is immaculate. Like when they come, I clean for when they come. Meaning like I tidy up. There's nothing in the sink. There's not a dish in the sink. Yeah. Nothing. I want you to just go fucking ham on every surface and inside things. And then yeah. sometimes like our bathrooms are about to be ripped up. We have no bathrooms except like the casita where you were or upstairs for the next month and a half. And I was like, okay, instead now every week, just I want you to like, one day do the inside of the fridge. One day do all the windows, like like extra things to just make up for the fact that like you there's only like half a house to clean, I guess. But <laughs> but I I have to sometimes like stop myself from cleaning, knowing that I have someone that I'm paying a lot of money to to come do a job. So the like I so asked what them did they do? do? What did you what did you notice though? Like after they left, were you like, oh whoa, this is this feels clean. There's only one thing that they did that I was like, wow, that's nice. I didn't think about that, which was the blinds in my bedroom. Oh, yeah. Because I sleep with the windows open. And I guess there's like over time, I didn't even realize that, that they had changed color. Like they were like a different color because because I don't like I don't think about that shit. So it was like they went from like white to like gray, like they were just kind of gray. But like I, I didn't even notice. I just thought like that was my blinds because it happened so slow over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm. I've never lived in a place like I lived in New York City my whole life. I never lived somewhere where I got to keep the windows open right before. So like I was and I was also never and I a can't clean do that guy. Here. I can't do yeah. that here because it's so too I hot just, and like, too many bugs. I came inside and I was like, holy shit, like those blinds are white as fuck. Like I thought that they were just like, like That's it just kind of. Yeah, and your bathroom so was super clean. Yeah, no, I didn't. Like, I've cleaned my bathroom before where I thought I did a better job. They did a good job on the inside of the fridge. Uh, you know what they did a good job on? Like, my terrace, you know? Oh. Like, I have a terrace. Do you vacuum? Like, uh, no, I just sweep. Like, heavy sweep. Because you don't and have, then, like, carpets. I only have one carpet in the bedroom. And, like, every two months, I, like, borrow Cassim's, uh <laughs> like, robotic vacuum and just, like, set it free in there. But Your it's robot? not... Yeah, my I have like between the bed and other stuff, like I have very little like surface area of rug. Yeah. The cleaning. So they it was the first time I've ever had cleaning people in my apartment. I'm 37. I've never had that before. And I'm like, wow, like this is a big like well, and I'm like, they did great. Like nothing's out of the ordinary. Like because like I always had a thing about it. Like I don't want them touching my stuff. I don't yeah. want this. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm like, something's different. Like I'm like, I don't know what it is, but like something is different here. And I guess what they did was. When they cleaned my refrigerator, when I asked them to clean my refrigerator, they took everything out of it, put it on like the stove and the kitchen counters and everything. And then when they were done, they put everything back in the fridge. But what they didn't realize was like- You had a put, order? No, they put everything from my kitchen counters that was there also back in the fridge. Like what? Like your Just olive oil? Candles, like- <laughs> all of what everything Jamie like I was like I was you like, had uh, candles in your fridge I had candles in my fridge <laughs> Jamie I I came I came back to my kitchen and I'm just like wow I'm like this place I'm like they did such a good job cleaning that I'm like it feels different I'm like what is this yeah. like what's different this and then all of a sudden I'm sitting around and I'm like wait where's this thing I'm like where's that thing and there was like you know there was like a thing of just like oil that there was just like everything that was there they put in back the in the refrigerator and i was like holy shit i was like that's a that's a move like you know but i'm like okay like yeah thank you like maybe they're onto something yeah it was a good that's uh, funny that was a funny. good move so i think i think we might be a little short in this episode but we had issues with the stream and we had issues with yeah, the zoom we sorry. had that Cassim's not around this but uh yeah jamie Cassim usually wraps it up you want to wrap it up for the people oh well um support the people that support the show 
You can find us on Instagram, Pajama Pants Podcast. I'm on Instagram, Jamie Lynn Sigler, Rob's Off the Grid, on Twitter, I think. Also on Instagram is Cassum. And we love you. We also have a Reddit, Pajama Pants oh. Podcast. And that was it. This was our life update. Yeah, Cassim is so good at the wrap up the show. Like I was wondering what you were going to do to wrap up the show and you just did exactly what Cassim does. Not really. I did not do it as good as him. That That is his role and will he'll be his role forever. Right. I just meant usually Yami Lee in life takes her own spin on things. And that's what I thought was going to come. But oh. you were very Cassim G. You know, like I thought you were just going to yeah. be like, love you guys. Like, oh, you know? God. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> Bye. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. You always want me to do a Jamie Lee impression. That was it. I love do. you guys. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you guys.